Hi, my name is Thane Glenn and uh, put together a little video on best picks for uh, modern archtop mandolins and uh, classical bullback mandolins. Uh, lots of stuff out there on good picks to use, uh, so why am I adding another uh, video into the mix? Well. I couldn't really find anything that compared picks for archtop mandolins and bullback mandolins for uh, modern styles and classical styles uh, in the same place. And so I thought maybe some people might find this useful, and uh, so I thought I'd put it together. Um, little uh, proviso, I've been playing mandolin for about six years, um, started playing uh, old time fill tune type stuff, uh, gradually worked into bluegrass, and then from there gradually worked into playing some classical and just a little bit of jazz. Um, I, in many ways I really consider myself still a novice, uh, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, that said, I do think I'm, I'm very interested in good tone and uh, so I'd, and I've tried out a lot of picks so I think uh, I might have something useful to offer you here. To some extent um, pick choice is personal preference. It also depends heavily on both the particular instrument and the strings that you use. What's going to sound good will vary from, from instrument to instrument and from different kinds of string to different kinds of string. Uh, so, you know, experiment, see what sounds good to you. Just a, a quick word about this video. Um, I'm going to try to uh, give you a little bit of a good sound sample for each, um, each pick that I try out. Um, I also don't want the video to go on super long, so um, I will be editing it down a lot, um, so you'll see a lot of cuts. And... Um, I am going to put probably a little bit of um, compression and EQ and reverb on the mandolin tone uh, just because I think that will help to accentuate the differences between the different picks a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let's give it a whirl. First, let me say a little something about um, the instrument I'm using and the strings I'm using. Uh, this is a Nugget A5 Junior mandolin. Um, beautiful instrument. I feel really privileged and lucky to own it. Um, and I'm using uh, Didario um, EJ74 strings on it. Um, as far as I can tell, these are, are kind of the go-to strings for archtop mandolins, uh, certainly F-style F mandolins. Uh, this is not an F-style mandolin, but uh, F-hole mandolins. Um, and uh, I like these strings a lot. I think they sound really good. I've tried um, the heavier gauge, uh, and those just are a little bit too barky for my taste. Um, and the lighter gauge is just too too jangly. Uh, these strings have been on here a few months. Uh, they're probably a little bit past their prime. I do like to play my strings in for a week or two before using them for a performance, otherwise I, I find they're just a little too brassy when I first put them on. So in any case, um, I've got seven picks here to talk about, uh, and uh, the first one I want to talk about is this one. This is uh, Wigan or, or Wagen, I'm not sure I've heard both, uh, and who knows if even either of those is, is correct, but... Uh, uh, I'll just call them Wagon. This is a Wagon M100. Uh, it's uh, one millimeter thickness, and uh, you can see it's got the rounded edges. Um, this has kind of become my go-to pick for um, for uh, recording and for any kind of small ensemble. Um, I think it's got a really uh, a really nice tone. I think it brings out that kind of buttery woodiness of the instrument really well. Um, uh, not too harsh ever. Uh, and um, so yeah, so see what you think.
Um, I've got two other Wigan picks here. Uh, this is the, the TF140, uh, 1.4 millimeter thickness. Um, it's got those uh, the beveled triangular edges. Um, it's, it's got a, a little bit of a brighter tone, uh, maybe a little bit of a harsher tone, a little more aggressive. Um, so, see what you think. Yeah, this is um, the last Wigan pick I want to show you. This is the BN120. Uh, That's 1.2 millimeters thick. Um, it's kind of uh, somewhere across between the, the M100 uh, and the TF140. Um, maybe slightly rounder edges and a little thinner. Um, and so if you're looking for sort of a hybrid between that more aggressive sound and... Um, and the, that kind of more buttery sound, uh, this might be the right one. Um. Um, I want to talk about blue chip pick, uh, and um, this is a, uh, a blue chip TAD60, um, and uh, it's uh, 1.5 millimeter thickness. Uh, this one has two um, beveled edges, two triangular beveled edges, and one rounded edge, so you can kind of get both both kinds of sounds. Um, this is an incredible pick. I would say uh, this is my go-to pick in whenever I'm playing bluegrass or uh, any time that um, I need the the instrument to carry through the sound a little bit more. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little taste of both the rounded edge and the, the beveled edge. So this is this is the beveled edge. Um, So that's the beveled edge. Here's the rounded edge. Um, say I've tried a lot of different blue chip picks I think this is this is the one I come back to every time I think it's it's a great pick um, I've tried uh, the um, thinner gauge and the thicker gauge uh, I've tried some different styles the only other blue chip that I really like uh, a lot is the um, the blue chip large jazz uh, 60 which is also 1.5 uh, millimeter thickness um, you know it's a jazz pick and it it's, sounds great for jazz it's got a little bit more of that um, 
that sort of hollow focused note tone to it. Um, five picks are, are kind of my go-to picks um, and then I just have two other honorable mentions here uh, one is the uh, the Dunlop prime tone uh, this is another uh, 1.5 millimeter pick it's got the three triangular uh, beveled edges um, it, it, it's kind of a similar pick to to this one um, and so you know one one big debate out there is why would you pay for a blue chip pick when you can get you know a, a Dunlop prime tone for literally uh, you know um, an, an eighth or a tenth of the price uh, it's a fine question the way I see it um, you know if you're gonna pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for a nice instrument uh, the difference between the cost of this pick and the cost of this pick is, uh, oops, <laughs> is you know is essentially the cost of one meal out in a you know a decent restaurant, um, and so why not why not spend that money to try it out? That's my my thought and. Uh, and blue chip is great uh, about returns. Um, you can, I think it's within 30 days. I haven't checked for a while, but you can always uh, send a pick back, exchange it for a different pick. I've done that a few times, and it's it's wonderful. No questions asked. It's a great process. But you know, on a budget, this is a pretty good pick. Uh, um, you know, it it doesn't have it doesn't have the depth of tone that you get with a blue chip. It doesn't have quite that sort of uh, buttery sound that you get from the the wagon. Um, but but it's a good pick. Just a little bit of an overtone, at least on this instrument, a little bit of an overtone to the chop that I don't like. Uh okay, um, and then uh, my, my other honorable mention is, uh, this is um, an EML pick, this is a casein pick, um, uh, and uh, I'll admit, this is a beautifully made pick. It's really wonderful workmanship. Um, this one is 1.5 millimeter thickness. It's got two beveled uh, triangular edges and one rounded edge. Um, I, I will admit I don't play this pick a whole lot. And, and the reason is that I find the casein picks, um, that's a kind of plastic that's made, I think, from milk solids, uh, milk proteins. Um, it it, uh, it gives just a little bit of a glassy edge to the tone. I think, I think you'll hopefully you'll be able to hear what I mean. And um, you know, it might be exactly the sound that, that some people are looking for. For me, it's not quite what I'm what I'm listening for, but. Uh... <laughs> I think I like it better than the uh, than the prime tone, but um, 
But I don't know, can you hear that glassy edge? Anyway, um, just say some other picks that aren't on the on the um, stool here. I've also um, tried Red Bear picks, which I think are also casein picks, um, and uh, sa same thing. I mean, I, I I actually think that the EML is a higher quality pick, um, but uh, but similar sounds. Um, uh, the dog picks, uh, some people love those picks. Uh, I, I can't get them to, to really sing. I find that um, for me, they have a little bit of a muffled sound. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't use those. Um, and there are lots of other picks out there you can try. These are the ones that I, I think are the, the best of the best. Okay. All right, so now I'm set up with my uh, bowl back. I'll just tell you a little bit about the instrument and the strings I'm using. Uh, this is a, a Luigi Emberger, 1935 Luigi Emberger uh, Typo A mandolin. Really lovely instrument, very privileged to own it. Uh, and um, I'm using uh, these uh, Fasoma Consort strings, um, F3020 is the set number. Uh, these are very good strings. And now, not everybody loves these strings. Uh, I, uh, I've tried a few different kinds. Uh, I've tried um, some Optima Silver strings. Uh, they were just a little too brassy for me on this instrument. Um, I really like the way these strings sound, uh, especially after being played in for a couple of weeks. Uh, I think they have a, a really nice, um, deep textured sound, a lot of overtones, uh, but they really bring out that, that sort of woody thunk of the instrument. So, uh, I have six picks that I want to uh, work through today, and um, start with my, my current go-to pick. This is uh, Golly Strings um, Heavy Pick, um, and uh, it's um, one millimeter thickness. It's celluloid, it's a celluloid pick. Uh, and you'll see most of these picks are celluloid. Uh, I found that celluloid tends to have a better sound for the bullback, um, whereas uh, none of the picks that I use for my archtop mandolins um, are celluloid. Uh, and the bullback Mandolins use lighter strings, lighter gauge strings, uh, typically than, than modern mandolins, arch top mandolins. Um, and you play them with a slightly different technique. Uh, so whereas with the arch top mandolin, you're angling the pick against the strings a little bit, uh, and, and maybe a, a slightly, um, I don't want to say tighter grip, but a, a a more nestled grip, maybe. Uh, um, with uh, the, the bullback classical technique, you're striking the strings at a parallel angle. Um, and uh, uh, and the, the, the grip is a little bit um, more delicate, I guess I would say. Um, so in any case, uh, you, it's a really totally different sound and requires a different, different kind of pick. So this is my go-to pick. I really like the way these guys sound. Uh, golly strings, this is the heavy pick. Uh, it, it, um, I think it, it's got tremendous overtones while bringing out a lot of the, the sweetness of the instrument without losing the low end of the instrument, the substance. Um, so, see what you think. I'll play a little bit.
next pick I want to show you here is also a Golly Strings pick. This is just the medium version. Um, this is uh, 0.7 millimeters thickness. Uh, and it's got a nice tone, but it's it's I don't like it quite as much as the heavy. It's got a little bit of a um, uh, a higher pitch tone. It's, uh, it brings out more of the the upper frequencies and loses some of the lower. I think um, anyway. Yeah. Um, these are uh, just good old Dunlop uh, teardrop um, celluloid picks. Uh, this is uh, heavy, and the Dunlop uh, picks don't give you their exact um, thickness, but heavy tend to be around a millimeter or maybe a little bit less than that. Um, these have a nice sound, I think. Um, not they don't have quite the the richness. I don't think they don't have quite the the uh, the overtones, um, the the depth of the golly strings picks, but uh, but quite a nice tone. Um. <laughs> Um, and then this is the medium Dunlop, uh, and again, not a, not an exact gauge, but I think the thickness of the medium is somewhere around uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimeters, somewhere in there. And, and again, the the lighter pick has a little bit of a brighter, edgier tone, um, but but quite nice. This is uh, this is a different kind of pick. This is a, a Roman style pick, the, the double edged. Um, uh, this pick I made myself. Um, the as far as I know, the only commercially available Roman style plectrum or pick that that you can get is a Red Bear. Um, and I, I've tried one of those out. Uh, again, it's it's made of casein, and I didn't. Didn't really like the tone. It's just a little too, uh, a little too sharp, a little too edgy. Um, so this I made from a um, a 1.5 millimeter thick sheet of uh, celluloid that I got, um, and uh, there is some information out there on on how to create these picks. But you know, I, I've made a few of these, and I tried some with Altem as well as with celluloid. Um, if if there's interest, I might make a, a really detailed step-by-step -step video on how to make one of these picks. Um, it, it's it's quite a bit of work, but I think it's um, it's kind of fun. Uh, and so this particular pick, um, I think it has a pretty good sound. It's uh, it's 
it brings out a little bit more volume. Probably it's a slightly heavier pick, so it brings out a little bit more volume. Um, it's got more of a centered tone, less less uh, array of overtones, I think. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll play it a little bit, see what you think. This last pick I want to talk about, this is really kind of an honorable mention pick. Uh, this is a Vola pick. Um, I'm not sure how thick this is. It's it, it's quite thick though, and it's made from, it's not celluloid, it's made from almost kind of a rubberized sort of plastic. It, it's fairly soft pick. Um, and uh, I understand these are, are favored uh, with um, German style bullback mandolins. Uh, it creates a softer tone, a slightly more muted tone. Um, it can be quite a lovely tone. Uh, for me, uh, especially with the Amberger mandolin, um, I really like that, that slightly brighter tone. Um, so uh, anyway, but you know, this, this is a nice pick. <laughs> Perfect pick for, for certain kinds of music. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, I actually almost never use this pick with this instrument anymore. Because um, uh, I'm usually looking for a tone that's much better carried by one of these other picks, but it's a nice pick. So there you have it. You know, these, these different mandolins really are made for different styles of music. Um, you can play classical music, you can play that kind of Baroque stuff on, um, on a modern mandolin, on an archtop mandolin, and it sounds great. I mean, Chris Thiele is a master of that on his beautiful uh, Lloyd Lore Gibson. Uh, but I, there's something about the sound of, of the bullback, um, that kind of piercing, delicate, almost fragile tone. Um, I tell you what, you get, you get one of these in a big uh, open space of a cathedral room like that. Um, it just sounds amazing, uh, I think. Um, put a little reverb on it. Oh, incredible. Um, whereas you try to play something like bluegrass on this and it just sounds terrible. It sounds just silly. Um, so in some ways maybe a less flexible instrument than, than the archtop mandolin. Uh, but boy, a beautiful, beautiful tone for certain kinds of music. Um, the archtop uh, has not quite as um, piercing a tone in some ways it's a mellower tone, um, but it, it's a perfect blend for something like bluegrass or old time um, music. Uh, and it can sound really nice playing um, playing classical, although uh, I found that since I've started playing bullback, I really um, almost always play this instrument for classical music. I just find it, it's, uh, I just love the tone. Well, I'll just say again, um, you know, I, I do think if if people are looking for information about how to make a Roman style pick, I'd be happy to to put together a detailed step by step video on on how to make one of these. Uh, again, I'm not an expert, 
I just took everything I could find online and, and used it and used some of my own brain power uh, and uh, figured out, you know, through some trial and error how to make one. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching and I uh, hope that this was useful for you.